good afternoon. Welcome along to the Rovers Academy for Premier League Two game number two for Rovers against Crystal Palace under 21s. The Eagles getting their campaign underway today after a postponement last week against Fulham. Rovers in their famous blue and white halves. Palace in their away kit, all yellow for the Londoners. And it's going to be Zach Marsh that gets this contest underway for the Eagles. And enjoyed a pretty good season last term. Did get silverware as well, winning the Premier League International Cup. Coming out on top against PSV in the final at Selhurst Park. Rovers will be hoping to improve, as always, every single campaign. A lot of young players that have going to get their chance this season. There's one now in his second campaign, Tom Bloxham. He's offside, scored last week against Everton, the former Tottenham winger. We will go through the Rovers side. There's a slight break in play. It's a 4-2-3-1 formation selected today by Mike Sheeran. Jack Barrett starts in goal. Back four of Lucas Houghton, Rhys Doherty, Matty Litherland and Jake Batty. Midfield pairing of Adam Caddick and James Edmondson. Three in front of those are Aidan Doherty on the right-hand side. Don Biniak in the 10 position. Tom Blocks him on the left and Exose Mafumbi leading the line. A young Frenchman who arrived in the summer after departing Nantes. Still settling into life in East Lancashire. Blocks him helping out defensively. He has just tagged the Palace man on this near side. Maybe shooting from right to left. Kayla Kapora just brought down there. Taken by Dylan Reed to Scott. Here's Kapora on the right hand side. Take it on Bloxham who sticks to the task and gives away a throw in deep in the Rovers half. In fact, it's gone Rovers way, so it must have come off the Palace right back. Down the line by Batty. A little shove there by Mufumbi. Referee Oliver Mackey deciding that's a free kick. Palace get the game resumed nice and early. Jack Benoni puts it back across. Blocks him there trying to cover. It's going to break to a Palace man. It's going to wriggle away. Look to toe poke it towards goal. Saved by Barrett twice. Comes back. Third time lucky. And Palace have the advantage early on. It's Asher Agbinoni from close range. Tucks in. Bit of pinball in the penalty area. And Palace just three minutes into the contest. Hit the front. Rovers probably not good enough defensively to clear the lines. Palace had two bites of the cherry. And there was no mistake there by the Palace winger. First real attack of the game. Rovers concede early, as they did last time out against Everton. I'm sure Sharon will be really disappointed with that one, because there were opportunities to hack the ball away from danger. They weren't taken. And Palace made the host pay. Here they come on the attack again with Mustafa in field two. The goal scorer, Agbinon, goes for goal, and that was just going to loop over the top of Barrett's crossbar. But Palace looked lively. The Londoners started well. Rovers probably just need to settle down. Get a bit of a foothold in this contest. And it sweeps it out to Batty. It's filled to Caddick. Slides it out towards Bloxham. Loses out on the header. Edmondson under a bit of pressure from Reed. Edmondson then takes down Reed. Loses a boot as well, so will be a slight break in play. This 
Roger Mead. Back to Louis Moulden from Bolton. Actually signed for Palace yesterday from Wolves. So make it a very quick debut. 22-year-old. Reed does well. Actually, good footwork to get out of a bit of a hole there. Is Deveni. Cross to Grant. Nice bit of possession for the Eagles. It's Rodney. Nice play. Matty goes to engage down the line. And now in field looking for the striker Marsh. Rovers win it back. Marsh goes to close down Barrett. Out towards Houghton. Loop down the line. It was going to be difficult to get onto that one. Just take a deflection. Fortunately, the conditions have improved from earlier on this morning where there was a bit of a storm in East Lancashire. The sun has come out, though, so good conditions by the looks of it. Doherty in field to Mufumbi. Looks to go for goal from an acute angle. Well held there by Malden. First time he's been called into action seven minutes into this contest. Difficult one for the Frenchman to score from from that angle. Alden was tempted to go for the diagonal. Goes short in the end. His Reed spreads the play across to Grant. Good drop there by Houghton, who now bursts down the right hand side for Rovers. He's got Doherty on the outside there. Not going to keep that one in play, unfortunately, the Northern Irishman. Well, it's looking comfortable in possession here. Settled into the game. You see Reid is, is beginning to orchestrate things as the deepest line midfield player in there. Alongside Justin Deveni, the visiting captain. Socks rolled down. Just think from Caddick could battle in with Deveni. The goals in the last meeting, which actually came at this venue back in January. Three all draw between the two sides. Franco Uma, who starts today for Palace, he scored a brace. Dylan Markandi scored a brace for Rovers. As Samir Talalovic as well scored a 90th minute goal that everyone thought was the winner, only for Uma to earn a share of the spoils for the Eagles. Finished ninth last term. Uma can't keep that one in. He actually scored the winner in that 1-0 win against PSV in the Premier League International Cup final. So he's got an eye for goal. Palace forward. There's the ball back for his side there. Locks him. Pressing it's a, a loose pass back there and unfortunately Mufumbi couldn't get there before Malden. Palace at the other end looked really quick and lively on the counter-attack. Here's the goal scorer, Agbin on. Goes on the outside of Houghton, ball in and dealt with by Litherland. No nonsense there from the Rovers number four. Smashes that one into orbit. It'll be a Palace throw in. Entertaining opening nine minutes here at the Academy. It's Grant. Everyone in the Rovers half bar. Palace goalkeeper Malden. Nice little flick there. But I've been on and his grant gets into the box. He's going to try and pull it back. And again, Batty there just to smash it away. Marsh's touch just got away from him there. Palace number nine. Sharon plays there with the covering from Batty. Just to get in and boot the ball clear. He's come again. Rodney goes inside, blocks him, and then sweeps the ball out. Really nice pass to Kapora on this right side. Reed. Kapora again. Down the line to Mustafa. He's not going to keep that one in. 
Rovers couldn't get the game restarted. Barrett across to Batty. Biniak loses that one. Can't dig it out, and now Reed comes away with it. Still Reedless to scoop it across, and Marsh is going to give chase. Put Houghton behind him. It's Grant. Mapping on. Starts away from Doherty. Gets back at him, the Northern Irishman, but he's got it back. The Palace goal scorer now looks to go in field, and Houghton does well to stay with him and then. Looked like he kept that away from being a corner, but the referee has said it is. Set piece coming Palace's way. Now just looking out there, Jameed is going to be a big target, the uh, Palace number five. Everyone back for Rovers to try and clear this danger. 2 0 down at this point would be a long way back. It comes from the midfielder and Barrett. Get something on that. It was looking for Jameed. It was a good ball in from Reid and just swelled away in the Barrett. wind. And difficult for Barrett, but he's got good something on it. Another Hold set piece to go. come. Palace's way. Reid delivers. Barrett comes for that and punches away. Gets good distance on it. Only as far as Kapora. Back in. Then back out by Houghton. Aiden Doherty gets it down. He's being surrounded by a couple of Palace players. It's bounced back off the Rovers winger and it's going to be another throw into the Eagles. So we're keeping Rovers penned in here. Rovers having to withstand some pretty heavy Palace pressure so far. Who's that been on? Marsh. Always come thumped into Houghton. Another corner to come Palace's way and another in swinger on the way. Palace in control so far. On the pitch and also with the current scoreline, that third minute goal from Asha Agbinon. The difference so far in this one. Reed delivers again. Into the free header in the end from a Palace man. It's bouncing around in there. Scruffy. It's going to be another shot. Another block in there from Doherty. Mufumbi's trying to get hold of this. Palace try and win it back. Real battle in there. Mufumbi's just been taken down. But it was a sixes and sevens there defensively. I think there was a shot from Justin Deveni. Eventually cleared, but it did not look convincing defensively from Rovers' point of view from that set piece. Looks like Biniet was just barged off the ball there by Mustafa. The referee agrees. It's Caddick. Had an injury hit spell last term for the 21s, so he'll be eager to make up lost ground from last term. Barrett goes long, looking for Bloxham, who's going to give chase, and Mulden is going to come for that. Bloxham gets there. In fact, he's going to have another go. Bloxham gets to the edge of the box, plays it out to Mufumbi, surrounded by Palace men. Doherty goes for goal. Great block in the end by Grant. Rover's not quite making the most of that opportunity because Mulden just let the ball slip from his grasp, and it comes from Doherty. No, he's going to go to Caddick. Now Edmondson, there's a yellow wall there, and in the end it's... Mustafa is going to come away with it and there's Palace on the break again with Zach Marsh, the 18-year-old. He's been forced back by Litherland but he's got the bounce of the ball there. Marsh still going forward. Litherland still with him. He's found Dylan Reid. Palace come again. Been a very watchable game so far. Yes, adjust. Caleb, adjust. There you are. There we are. Here's Kapora. Batty chases him down. Reed, for once his touch isn't quite perfect. Biniak helps it on to Mufumbi. He loses out to Deveni. Palace win it back quickly again. That's been the story so far in this one. Here they come with Franco Uma. 
the Irishman on the left-hand side cuts in, takes Houghton on, and then in the end, good block there from Rhys Doherty. Sees it goes out for a throw-in deep in the Rovers' half, but Palace looking really dangerous, particularly in that final third, and they're breaking forward with pace. Almost feels as if they're targeting young Lucas Houghton. Down that uh, Palace left, Rovers' right. Jake, go over. Mophie, Caden. Oh! Jake, higher! Mophie, lock in! taken. Outside of the boot to Reed. Now is Caden Rodney, 19 year old, out towards Kapora. Darts inside. Batty sticks with him. Edmondson being forced to defend as Kapoor has continued his run. Nice ball in across Barrett. It just squirms away. In fact, they're going to get another chance, are they? No, it's a foul on the Rovers goalkeeper who's got the captain's armband on today. Palace is saying he only had one hand on it, but the referee was in a good position to give that one. Taken short. Netherland back to Barrett. That's a poor clearance and it's going to drop to Mustafa. Goes on the outside of Netherland. Mustafa goes for goal and Barrett makes amends. Oh, smothering with his legs there. But it's a poor clearance from the 22-year-old goalkeeper. He's been let off there by Indolo Mustafa. Great opportunity for Palace, that. Credit to... Barrett for recovering. Delivery from this other side now. And swing up with the left foot, goes short, gets it back. Good ball in and uh, headed away there by Edmondson. The delivery from Deveni. He's going to have another go. He's got a bit of space. It just holds up in the wind and that allows Aiden Doherty to get in there and get a touch on it. But Deveni gets it back. Northern Irishman on Northern Irishman there. He's Grant. Out and gets into clear, but Palace in command and control of this game so far. Alden headed back by Houghton. Nice feet there from Aiden Doherty. Edmondson. Biniak now to Houghton on the. Rovers right hand side, bit of possession for the home side here. Caddick. Again, Palace just forcing Rovers back into the own their own half. Edmondson, Caddick. Doherty looking for Mafumbi. Struggled to really get involved in this game so far. Looks a little bit isolated, the Rovers number nine, but he's gonna get it back now and can't find blocks him, unfortunately. They're trying to set the traps, Rovers, in that sort of area, midpoint of the Palace half, and a bit of quality. The final pass not quite coming off so far. Izuma, nice touch from him. Wonder if he'll be looking for a low move into the EFL somewhere. The young Palace attacker, following the footsteps of Jessaran. Rack Saki, who's recently joined Sheffield United on a loan deal. Spent time on at Charlton as well. A new Blades winger. So Uma could be following in his footsteps. With a week to go at the window. Here's Kapora. Marsh was just taken down there by Litherland. And Palace free kick, probably 30 yards from goal now. An inviting position. I think Litherland's going to get a book in as well for that one. Bit of an off-the-ball tussle. It's a touch harsh, but... Litherland treading a bit of a tightrope 20 minutes into this one. Indo, go and get level with... Indo, go and get level with Just. Opportunity for... Reed to deliver this one. Come on, Hindo, quickly. Go and get level with Just. 
Five yellow shirts just waiting on the edge of the box. Again, everyone back for Rovers. Every blue shirt. No more than 20 yards away from Jack Barrett's goal line. Here it comes from Dylan Reed. Nice delivery in there. Patty gets a touch, and in the end, I think it comes off Uma. And then just goes maybe a yard or so over the top of Barrett's goal. Again, it wasn't convincing. Rowe was not winning the first contact from a set piece. Not the first time that's been said in this game. 20 minutes in. It's Houghton. Youngster just gets a touch. It's fair to say that they've been on, didn't agree with that decision. a little bit soft and the was right back there Caddick gets the restart going Batty touches back in field Litherland clips it in towards Biniak who's been asked to do a lot there against the powerful AMO Jumaid Caddick can you see the press from Palace just Making life tough for Rovers. Here is Houghton just trying to wriggle away from Uma. He's done well to get it up the line to Doherty. Here's Edmondson. Afumbi can't get his touch. Oh, comes off the referee. Referee means it'll be a drop ball. I think he's giving it Palace's way for some baffling reason. Marsh, good hold up play from him. Reed just tagged. It's been that sort of game so far. Very stop start. In spells, I think the football's been good, but it's just not quite flowed for either side. Although Palace have certainly looked the better. As we pass the midpoint of this first half, Reed is going to receive some treatment there. It looks like his hips being assessed. Scott, and that will allow both managers to have discussions with their team. Just to go through what's gone well and what's not. Paul Butler down there just having a discussion with Adam Caddick. He probably wants a little bit more quicker play from him. Mike Sheeran there with his baseball cap on. Palace will be much the happier, not just with the scoreline, but the way the game's gone for them so far. Good spells for them. Maybe should have had Another one or two goals for their display so far. They do look confident. The Eagles. Reed down there still receiving a little bit of treatment. just getting to his feet now so good news for Palace that he looks to be okay to carry on Started then with the energetic Caleb Kapora. It's going to be Caden Rodney. Palace momentarily down to 10 with Reed waiting to come back on. It was long, but he's going to have to deal with that under pressure from Kapora and does. Caddick just robbed there by Mustafa. 
Agbinon wanted it back. He's going to now try and hassle Edmondson, who's gained some really good yards for Rovers there, and then runs out of room. Houghton's ball is a good one towards Biniak, who looks for Bloxham. He was out here on this near side, but couldn't find the 19-year-old Irishman. He really is back on. And Rovers subs today. Adam Khan, backup goalkeeper, Brandon Powell, Holly O'Grady Macken, Lewis Bell, and Zach Stritch. Here's Biniak, blocks him, surrounded by two Palace players. Gets it back though, Reed Ned slides in. That was a bit of a forceful challenge, I think, from Reed. Reed's going to get a booking for that as well. Looked a little bit harsh. I just thought it was a hard but fair challenge. So booking a piece with Reed joining Litherland in the referee's notebook. Caddick passes forward towards Biniak, who's not a great deal of service. And Rovers number 11. That Rovers have struggled to really get that front four in the game in the positions where they want them to do the damage in that final third area. But he wins the header down towards Edmondson, flicked on towards Bloxham, forced back. He's going to win Rovers a throw in just in front of the Palace dugout. Where Darren Powell is patrolling. Just over a year in charge, the former Palace player who also represented the likes of Brentford, West Ham, Southampton and Derby. Going to be a no-nonsense defender. Moved into coaching the Palace side a few years back before getting the promotion during Roy Hodgson's days as manager Paddy McCarthy taking on the role in the first team which opened up the opportunity for Powell and here's an opportunity perhaps for Bloxham in the Rovers half he's just left the ball there gets to the edge of the box and Palace come away with it again with Reed. So you've got to take them, make the most of those opportunities if you're Tom Bloxham pulled out by Barrett here's Edmondson looking forward there's not a lot of Blue and white shirts in front of him. Litherland. Left footed down the line to Bloxham. Looks to scamper away from his man. Kapora. He's gone Palace's way as well. Throw in. Teammates want a bit more there from Tom Bloxham. He's acting on the field to Reed. Really has been the man just to orchestrate things for Palace in that midfield position. It's Kapora. In field, it's a battle there, Edmondson and Mustafa. Mustafa wins it. Here's Deveni. Looks to get it back. And now here's an opportunity. Biniak looks to find Bloxham. Asked to take on his man. He's in a similar position to he was a moment ago. A couple of step overs. One more on the outside. Looks to clip in a left footed cross, and it's a comfortable catch for Louis Malden. The Palace girl who's not really had a great deal to do. The Bolton born goalkeeper. Nice aggressive play there from Litherland, who was just held back there by Marsh. Three kicks taken. Caddick. Houghton on the line to Doherty who's always going to try and cut in on that left foot very much the modern look to these Rovers wingers it's a poor ball there from Doherty and now there might be an opportunity for Agbin on edge of the box he's got Doherty at his back he's Grant Deveni left footed such roll down plays midfield for Crystal Palace reminds you of someone else I think one of our own, Adam Wharton, gearing up for his first full season at Selhurst Park. 
It's Reed. Who's forward? Who's get it back? Edmondson outside of the left boot to Aiden Doherty. And now there's a bit of space and time for Biniak to drive forward. He's got Mufumbi on the left hand side. Mufumbi now looks to drive in field on that right foot. But this man gets a touch and chance is gone. Rodney could defend in there from him. He's Grant, Deveni. The two Palace midfielders. Look. Good technicians in there. Darren Powell's outfit. Are fresh having not played last week. Reed. Ball. I think he caught that well, but Mustafa's got it. Back to Rodney. Here's Grant. See Umer on that left hand side, really hugging the touchline. Just staying away from it. Mulden. He's Grant. He might get involved shortly, Frank Uma. In fact, it's a looping ball that he flicks on. Marsh gives chase. Litherland has got that one, but he can't find Doherty. And it looked like Marsh was offside there. The flag does go up on this near side. Caddick. Long ball out towards Aiden Doherty brings it down with that left foot, just allows Grant to get a challenge in on the Northern Irishman. Throw into Rovers. Midpoint of the Palace half. Houghton just sort of bundles his way through three challenges, goes to ground, nothing given. Eagles come away with it, but then Reed's been robbed by Caddick, who gets to the edge of the box. He's going to go for goal. Good block in the end from Caden Rodney. All the way back to Malden. Rovers have won it back in good positions, but they haven't got the clean strike away. Well, they've just lacked that little bit of quality that you need, that bit of care. The final pass or touch. 33 minutes played, still Palace with the advantage from that early goal from Asher Agbin on. He's on the ball now. In fact, now it's Uber, a couple of step overs. He's taken on Houghton. Gets on the outside and then looks to send in a really good ball across the six yard box. It's going to be collected by. Caleb Kapora, who's been really advanced from right back. The Palace youngster, Batty's there. So can you beat me? Kapora fancies his chances, but Batty just puts the afterburners on to get the ball back. Lashes it away, but only as far as Grant. Palace coming forward again. Deveni. Agbin on. He's got Houghton at his back. It's going to be a Palace throw in. Veni, 20 year old, senior outfielder for Crystal Palace, the number eight captain today for the Eagles. Caddick's ball, the channel one for Bloxham to give chase and flicks it back over the head of Rodney. Still Bloxham trying to shake off the Palace defender, and Edmondson's made a good run. Bloxham wants it back on the outside. Edmondson goes all the way back to Batty. Edmondson on this touchline just you see the yellow shirts just swarm towards the Rovers players when they've got the ball. Batty looking down the line. Finds Biniak who just Biniak loses out and now Palace come forward with Indalo Mustafa. Agbin on, he's going to take on Houghton again. In fact, he's going to drive inside. It's a really good, strong play from the Palace number 11. He's getting towards the edge of the box. Central position is Mustafa. Across to Uma. Deveni. Message from his teammates was keep it. He's just done that. Hanko! Fumbi. Just trying to close down Grant. Out towards Franco Uma. Deveni. Reed's made a run in field. He just gets it back. Flick of the boot. Finds Marsh. Really nice play from Palace here. It's got to be said. Kapora tries to put a delivery in. 
Batty gets a block. He's going to get it back and just smashes that one into Warburton's in system. Of Fumbi, can you give chase? He is. He's just got goal side. He goes to ground. There wasn't a great deal of contact in that. He's got to be stronger there, the Frenchman. I think under pressure from Rodney. Didn't look like there was much contact at all there. It's Kapora. Here's Malden. Right. Palace still with the lead and still in command of how this game is going with ten minutes to go until half time interval. Expect there will be maybe a minute or two of additional time for that injury to Dylan Reed earlier. Little Indy's got Batty alongside him. And finds the Rovers number three who is closed down by Mustafa. Blocks it, keeps him with his left foot, and goes back to Batty with his right. Loose ball towards Caddick, who just misses out. Reed gets there first, and now is Deveni. Breaks forward from midfield. He looks to his right hand side, sees Marsh, who's going to get there before Batty goes to ground. There wasn't a lot in that either. Good decision there by the match official. He's looking for that one, Zach Marsh. He didn't get it. Going to ground there under Batty's breath, I think. Is Doherty can't quite get it under his spell there, which is a shame because there's a lot of grass to run into there for the Northern Irishman. Almost sums up the half for Rovers. Turn there by Deveni. And now his Agbidon breaks forward. He's got a lot of players to his right and his left. He's gone infield towards Marsh. Clearance from Batty. Cannons off. Caddick. Reed. Nice touch and then flicks it with the outside of his boot. Gets it back. Reed is uh, Mustafa. Goes for goal. And finds the bottom corner. Really nice move there from Crystal Palace. Carved Rovers open, it was that touch and pass from Reed that just up the ante for the Eagles. And once it found Mustafa, he went across goal into that bottom corner to the right of Jack Barrett. And Palace now find themselves two up. Give Rovers a mountain to climb. 37 minutes on the clock. Rovers under 21's nil. Crystal Palace under 21's two. You'd have to say on the balance of this game so far, they probably deserve it, the Londoners. Real quality play from the Palace midfielders to just get it forward. Rovers couldn't react in time, and once it broke to Mustafa, it was felt there was only going to be one outcome. The Rovers need a response. They need to test Louis Malden. They've not really forced the former Wolves man into a save on his Palace debut. Barrett under pressure from Marsh. Launch clear from the right boot of Matty Litherland. Headed back in by Franco Uma. A nice turn by Agbinon. Uma gets it back on that left foot, sends it across. Litherland is there to block and smash it clear he's going to be there again the Rovers number four Doherty can Rovers counter looks towards Mufumbi down the line can't find it the pass is cut out Edmondson he's robbed there by Deveni and now he's Agbin on he's going to take on Reese Doherty he's on the outside good save in the end from Barrett Rovers again can't clear the line Barrett again real good stop to smother but again Bit of pinball in there. Rovers can't quite clear the lines well enough. And in the end, it's the goalkeeper getting his team out of jail there. Just 
cannoned off a couple of Rovers players. Britt Barrett did well. Former Everton man joined in the summer. Reed and Aiden Doherty can't get it clear. He's got his hand in the air. Palace aren't interested to continue. And that one from Abion on sales comfortably over the top of the bar. It feels as if the second goal has just given Palace another shot in the arm. They want more goals here. They want to try and kill this game off before the break if they can. I was having to withstand that pass from Barrett looked out of play and it was. Here's Rodney to Jameed. Now Grant has to go inside. He's robbed by Doherty again. Rovers need to make the most of one of these opportunities when they come their way. Still Aiden Doherty. The move just seems to have slowed down. Palace have got bodies back but blocks them just in the box and now takes the ball out of it and then goes back in again. Another step over. Just to send it in. Good block again by Kapora. It's been really impressive so far in this half. Attacking right back. Got a few good fullbacks, Palace. A real good assist by one of their players out on loan at Bromley at the weekend, Danny Imray. Well worth a watch on the highlights, that one. They've got high hopes for him, but certainly Kapoor at 18 looks a talent. Batty, cut out there by Marsh. Look energetic, Palace. It's Mustafa, strong. Just grabbing it. Caddix back there, Rovers continue, blocks and ball in field towards Biniak, gets it back from the pole, blocks him, going across the pitch is how blocks him, gets it back, he just seems to have a bit more energy in the legs now, Is Doherty, cuts back on that right foot, sends it across, Rovers have a corner, and these opportunities in the final third have been pretty few and far between in the opening 43 minutes of this game, will it be a set piece that gets Rovers back in the encounter because if it continues as it has done it should be a comfortable one for Palace Rovers take it quickly goes short Caddick looks to send it in flicked on by Biniak Reese Doherty trying to get a toe on that one it wasn't convincing by Louis Mulden Rovers going to get a second go at it Edmondson gets it on that favoured left Caddick again he can't beat Marsh again flicked on by Batty now Palace struggling to clear it, he goes into the air and now is Deveni. Is he going to get there before his Northern Irish compatriot? He doesn't agree with that decision, it's fair to say. It will be a Rovers throw in, taken. Caddick outside of the boot towards Biniak. Batty, Mufumbi. Just to dive inside, he gets challenged and Rovers free kick that looks a harsh one as well decision by Oliver Mackey but Rovers have got to make the most of these set pieces need to win the first contact delivery's got to be right I think too many times when been in these sort of situations the delivery hasn't been good enough Biniak now tasked with Sending a ball in that's a teasing one and a difficult one for Malden to deal with. Needs to be a blue and white shirt getting the head on it here. And it comes from Biniak, it's a deep one, it's a palace head, puts it back into a dangerous area when he could have left it. Blocks and scampers to keep that one in play. Now tries to the trick, gets it caught under his feet. All the way back to Houghton. And now Barrett, who's the midpoint of his own half, the and he spent time in Canada not too long ago on loan. Litherland out towards Biniak, who seems to have just swapped with Bloxham on this left side. Batty looking for Bloxham, who's now taken up that position. And Mustafa's going to come away. Biniak's going to have to keep track with him. Caddick loses him. Houghton puts a boot in there. Here's Umet. And now Agbinon. Umer again on the outside. This is where Palace have looked really dangerous. High energy. Franco Uma's got two Rovers players at his back. He's 
used good footwork to win his side of throw in in that far corner. Three minutes of additional time now to come. I think if you're overs, you're just hopeful that it doesn't get worse than this in these next three minutes. This is too filthy. It goes 3-0 Palace. It looks like there's a long, long way back for Mike Sheeran's men. It's Jameed to Grant and now... Reed has to play a 1 2 with Deveni. Rovers can break forward with Aiden Doherty. A few blue shirts there, but the pass isn't good enough and it's given up on by Mufumbi. Malden just waiting for a Rovers man to come and close him down, but he's just wasted another 30 seconds there. Smash clear. The goalkeeper not kept in by Kapora. Reached Doherty. There'll be one last opportunity for Rowers in what's been a half that won't be seen as the finest of Mike Sheeran's reign as under 21's boss. Throw in. Might be one more chance. Mufumbi, he's got Jameed at his back, goes on the three, Hindo. back to Pinyak, he's been busy without really having too much of an impact in this game. Well Morden's going to collect that one and that probably will be that of a first half that has been largely controlled by the Eagles. Plenty of work for Rovers to do. Otherwise, it's going to be back-to-back -back defeats at the start of this season in Premier League 2. Been slow starters to seasons over the last couple of campaigns, though. It does take Rovers a little while to get going. You don't want to be giving yourself too much work to do. It's Mustafa. Clip down the line and the referee just checks his watch. That could be that. So going to be a bit of extra time. Doherty. Out towards Houghton. The Rovers might have to be quick if there's going to be another chance in this half. Edmondson out to Litherland. Bloxham calls for it. Bloxham going to get it. He is. Keeps it in play. Another couple of step overs. Here's Biniak. Mufumbi. Touch is just about good enough. Can he win? Rovers a corner. No, there's not going to be the time. Referee blows his whistle in the first half that has been Palace's from a pretty early stage. Half time here at the Rovers Academy. Rovers under 21s nil. Crystal Palace under 21s two. Well, welcome back to the Rovers Academy, where Crystal Palace have the lead and have all the cards, really, and based on that first half performance. Rovers not quite at the races, and Mike Sheeran has reacted by making a double change at the break. Exos, Mufumbi has gone off, Zach Stritch coming on in his place, and Don Biniak replaced by Harley ogrady Macken. Tom Bloxham gets the game back underway, a work to do for Rovers in this second period. It's a big second half showing. Otherwise it will be back-to-back -back defeats to start this Premier League 2 campaign. They're straight on the attack. Here in the East Lancashire sunshine, here's a nice dart into the box by O'Grady Macken. Him and Zach Stritch combining there. There's not 
been too much goal mouth action from a Rovers point of view. And yet in the opening minute, almost bundled his way through there. O'Grady Macken, who has in the last couple of seasons popped up with goals from midfield. If he can get a couple in this game, that would really help Rovers. Doesn't look like there's any changes for Palace, and why would there be in control for large portions of that first period? He's Caddick. Just see what those changes have done. It looks like Bloxham is playing as a central number nine. Stritch has gone out to that left side, and O'Grady Macken's gone into that midfield. It looks to me as if Edmondson is playing as the ten. So the Rovers side looks as if it's Jack Barrett and goal. Houghton, Reece Doherty, Litherland and Batty as a back four. Midfield pairing of O'Grady, Macken and Caddick. With Aidan Doherty on the right, Zach Stritch on the left. James Edmondson in the ten roll and Bloxham now leading the line. And here is Houghton who's had to do a lot of defensive work in that first period but didn't get forward too much. Here's Bloxham. The step overs again. Batty, Edmondson, good start to this half from Rovers. Here's Bloxham. Grady Macken, Caddick, Stritch. Nice position for him to go for goal, and that one's just going to sail comfortably wide of Mulden's left-hand post. And that the power, as well as the accuracy from Zach Stritch. Mulden is going to go long. Looking for Frank Awuma. Osh misses out. Reese Doherty gets there first. Here's Mustafa for Palace, who was excellent in that first half. Mustafa goes for goal, and second time of asking, Barrett gets hold of it. Parried it at first, but didn't let the ball get away from him. Here's Houghton. Just takes a touch forward and looks in field to Edmondson, who's done well to bring that one under his spell, but then loses out to Frank Awuma. Batty, sweep ball from Caddick towards the Rovers number three. Space to run into there for Jake Batty. Low ball into the box. He's blocks him, twists and turns, and he's going to go into as far as Stritch, who makes no mistake. Lethal finish from the substitute. Rovers needed that, and Zach Stritch delivered. And that little change, putting Bloxham as the nine. Good hold-up play from him. Puts it back into the path of Stritch. Didn't have to think twice there. The young Rovers forward unleashes a strike that smashed into the roof of the net to the left of Louis Malden. And it's game on again. Rovers needed that response. 49 minutes on the clock. It's Rovers under 21s one, Palace under 21s two. And Umet shows off a trick and goes forward. Palace looking to respond at the other end. His Agbin on. Gets in field, gets a shot away. Good block there by Reese Doherty. Here's Doherty himself. Lovely play from him just to flick it beyond Agbin on and gets Rovers eight. Free kick. Oh, did Rovers need that goal? The next goal had to be for the hosts and it has been. Nice ball across to Doherty. Grant looks to have lost that in the wind and wasn't convincing again by Malden. Doherty could have nipped in. Rovers again coming forward, blocks and ball across and it just evades Stritch. Who made a great run into that six yard box. It's like a different team out there. The start of this second half, whatever Mike Sheeran said at the break is certainly working for the team. Much, much better from Rovers. Mike Sharon will be wondering where this was in the first period because it was all Palace. Got the early goal in this half. Netherlands to Batty. He just seems to have a bit more space on that left side now. Gets field to Caddick. Looks back outside towards Batty. Caddick gets it back, twists back in field. 
Toad pokes it towards Edmondson, who's going to have to hurry up and does. Under pressure from Marsh. Reese Doherty, switch of play towards Aidan Doherty. Infield towards O'Grady Macken. Nice play from Rose back to front, and the hosts have got a corner now. Asking questions of this Palace defence, which certainly wasn't the case in the first period. Edmondson, the man to take this in swing up. The size of the Palace team, it might be difficult to find a teammate here in the box. And it comes from Edmondson, good delivery headed away by Umet. Only as far as Aidan Doherty. Edmondson keeps it in, first touch towards Bloxham now. Got Doherty behind him, a little flick, here is Aidan Doherty. It's on the left foot, swings it in, headed away there by Eimov Jamid. Stritch. Turn, puts it through the legs of Reed. Gets it back. Rowe is in there first now. O'Grady Macken goes for goal, and that one just takes a bounce before it's well fielded by Malden. Good handling there from the Palace goalkeeper. Just seems more energy, more life in this Rover side, which we just didn't see in the first half. Batty goes in strong, gets it back, and now blocks and flicks it towards Doherty. Gives chase. Rovers will know Palace have that danger in the final third. Houghton does well, but then loses out to Uma. Mr. Venny, who's really impressive in that first period. Mustafa in field to Marsh. Here is. I've been on. Umet tries to get in the box, put it between the legs of Reese Dirt, who makes no mistakes, and then puts it forward. Blocks and tries to flick it on. Edmondson loses out. Palace now coming forward for the first time in this second period. Here's Reed. Cross to Kapora. Reed again. He was the one who was dictating things in that Palace midfield in the first half, hasn't quite had it all his own way so far in this period. Agbinot. Reed's ball cut out by Batty. And turned by Caddick around the corner towards Edmondson. Jimmy puts it out of play. Edmondson, Batty, Caddick turns back. Cross to Reese Doherty. Houghton wants it. Houghton gets it on this near side. The fair haired Rovers right back. Nice run there from O'Grady Mackett. He's in there tight. Nice ball. Finds a route towards Aidan Doherty. He's got blocks him on the edge of the box. Turns back. Now Caddick. Everyone in the Palace half now. Batty. Space. Gets the ball down. Sends in a good ball. O'Grady Mackett tries to get across Grant. In the end, the Palace left back. Just about does enough to hack it, clear a danger. Certainly feels as if the pressure is just growing a little bit more on that Palace back line. Jack Barrett, forward towards Aidan Doherty. Battles for a header with Grant. He gets the bounce of the ball. Doherty going to go for goal. Really good defending there by Caden Rodney to stick out a left boot. Here's Batty. Batty. Is he going to take on Mustafa? Infield towards Bloxham. Yes! Bloxham gets it back from Stritch. Nice feet from Bloxham. He's on the penalty spot. Takes a deflection. And Malden just falls on that one. Bloxham appears to be much more lively as a central player than he was in the first half playing on the left side. Litherland in a battle with Marsh. Litherland. Marsh puts him under pressure all the way back to Jack Barrett. Little turquoise looking long. Ask a lot of Batty, but that could be a great ball. Just guess. Beyond Batty. Nice idea there from Barrett. Go, 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 go
Kapora just taking his time. Sends it forward. Reese Darty gets there first. Nice touch there from Caddick just to get away from Dylan Reed. Ball over the top. Bloxham gives chase. He's going to close down Malden. Who's forced to go long. Smashes that one into the sky. Brought down by Mustafa. Batty in a battle. Wins her over as a free kick. A bit too forceful there from Ndolo Mustafa. The 18 year old. Very youthful Palace side out there actually. Here's Deveni, the senior outfielder. He loses out to Bloxham. Caddick, Bloxham. O'Grady Macken out towards Aiden Dirty. O'Grady Macken just moving Palace around now. Rovers, Caddick. Passes are just coming off. Nice turn from Bloxham. Gets away, got a bit of space. And then Houghton goes to ground in the box. Nothing given by the match official. Looked like it just an arm across. Under 20 was assistant Paul Butler not happy with that decision, but I think if it was given at the other end, I think you, you'd think it's a little bit too harsh. Palace ready in their first change. Down below us. Reed. Diagonal ball. Brought down really well at the air by Kapora. Mustafa. Beat Stritch. Rovers do well to get themselves out of a bit of a coldy sack there. Caddick tries to find Stritch. Good challenge there. Wins it back from Deveni. And now here's Batty. Lots of space to run into. In the end, puts it down the line. Blocks him. Gave on that one pretty. Gave up on that one pretty early. Palace could just be desperate for a spell of possession, the Eagles, because Rovers have sort of been much more at it. In the first period. Yep. High ball from Deveni. Referees allowed the advantage. Houghton was going to get there before Rume and he's given the uh, free kick back there. Palace aren't too happy with that. They wanted the advantage. I'm not sure Rume was going to get there before Houghton. Change for Palace coming up now. Dylan Reed replaced. Just feeling the effects from the knock he got in the first period, but I think he's had a pretty good game, the Scott. And he's going to be replaced by Jack Wells Morrison. And with 14 on his back, hour played. to be a straight swap. Wells Morrison going into that two-man midfield with Justin Deveni. Now I played here at the academy. Rovers 2-1 down. Had a much better second half display Good tigerish play from Batty who I think has probably been one of the shining lights out there for Rovers over the course of the game Batty rises gets ahead on that oh Grady Mackens touch just gets away with him with a space for Jake Grant to run into in fact this who met Aiden Doherty sticks with him. Houghton wins the ball back for Rovers. Down the line towards Bloxham. Rodney does well there, the 19-year-old. Houghton to take this throw in, just in front of the dugouts here. Paul Butler down there, barking instructions to the team. Ian Mike Sharon will be really pleased with 
how the second half has gone. Still a bit more work needed, though, to truly get themselves back in the game. But Rovers have given themselves a, a good opportunity. Here's Caleb Kapoor on the Palace right-hand side. Really attacking the first half. He's now just dipped inside. It goes for goal. And Palace have regained that two-goal advantage. First real attack of this second period for them. And it's the right back who was really impressive in the first period. Just darted inside, got a yard, and sent a strike. Cross goal into that far corner. His left foot. Barrett clutching at thin air. And that might just be a dagger to the heart of Rovers who had really impressed the start of this second period. James Edmondson there, Tom blocks some hands on hips. A lot of hard work's gone into the start of this second period and yet Palace now 3-1 in front. 62 minutes on the clock, it's Rovers under 21s 1, Crystal Palace under 21s 3. Right on there, there's a change for Rovers as well. Aiden Doherty going off and Lewis Bell coming on. I think that was a change that was going to be made before that Palace goal. But Kapora, who has been really attacking. There's a challenge there. I think from Batty. It should be a booking. I'm not sure there needs anything more than that. Probably just a bit of frustration following that Palace goal from Jake Batty. Mustafa who's down there and receiving a bit of treatment. The situation has calmed itself down. There was a bit of set to afterwards, but Batty is going to get booked. There come, out comes the yellow card. That's deserved. Rovers left back just checking on the welfare of Indolo Mustafa. Again, the break and play will allow both managers to offer their thoughts on how this half has gone. And I think Mike Sheeran will be probably the happier with how his team have played. And yet it's Palace that have got that goal that has really put them in command once again. Whole squad are just coming across here. On the pass beyond the front foot. Just be ready. Mustafa back to his feet. He goes across to the far side to have his 30 seconds off the pitch. Palace will restart this one with a free kick, which Justin Deveni is ready to take. Rovers all back on the pitch now. We've seen the two half-time changes have an impact. And Lewis Bell joined them. Just looking over to the far side. John Eustace is here. So watch some of the stars of the future that maybe could be involved at times this season. Maybe that Blackpool game next week could be an opportunity for one or two of these to themselves in the first team picture. Game is restarted. Boxham going to get hold of that one. And does. Lewis Bell is going to try and get on the end of it. The ball just holds up on the pitch there. Mulden comes and gets hold of that. Morgan launches that one long. Houghton wins that, one, that one in the air. Looked on by McGrady Macken. Blocks him, looks offside, but he's not. And now his row is in behind the Palace back line. He's going to go all the way to. It's going to be a corner kick, actually. Rose probably didn't make the most of that opportunity. 
blocks him. Running in behind, found Edmondson. I think he's probably going to try and get the shot away there. Just waited and that allowed a yellow shirt to get back there. Credit to the Palace defender. And that one should be hitting the target and making Malden work. He's taken short by Bloxham. He's got Caddick in support. Caddick gets it, swings it in. Malden comes and claims that one pretty comfortably in the end. Bowls it out to Marsh. And now Mustafa comes in field. That's the substitute, Wells Morrison. He's just calming it down again now. Jameed back to Malden. As we said earlier, he's had quite a week. Joining from Wolves yesterday. So then starting for Palace this afternoon in goal. Nice play from Deveni. There's Kapoor at the score of that third goal. That maybe would really harm Rovers because the play had been good up until that point. It was a great finish as well. Grant finds Franco Uma. About to Jake Grant. And now here's Jameed Moulton. Defeni, who looks really comfortable on the ball. It wouldn't surprise me to see a few of these Palace players out on loan in the EFL, maybe somewhere. All the window shuts in a week's time. Got the opportunities out elsewhere for some of these young Rovers players as well before the window slams shut. Batty looking for Stritch. He's giving chase. He's going to keep that in as well. The Rovers substitute is Bloxham. Looks to find Edmondson. Smash clear. Marsh collects. Back to Wells Morrison. Flicks it over the head. Houghton. He's going to give chase. Controls that with his chest, then gets barged over by Agbin. Agbin on. A bit of a silly one that from the Palace forward. Because it looks as if Lucas Houghton was in a bit of bother there. Litherland. And now Batty. Bit of a hopeful ball forward. Bloxham's going to try and hunt down Rodney. Edmondson, now Stritch. Edmondson's made the run. He's got a chance now. Cuts back in on that right foot. and Malden just falls on that one. Down to his left. Comfortable stop in the end from the 22-year-old. Chucks it out towards Grant on this near side. Who's Ume? He's been pretty quiet, the Palace man. One of the stars of last season. Certainly one of the stars in this fixture, having scored a brace at the start of this year. A three all draw, the last time the two teams met. 70 minutes played. Palace still in control. 3 1 lead now for the Eagles. Agbinol goes to ground. No, Grady Mackens. Not agreeing with that decision. I think the referee just going to have a word with him. Looks like there'll be a bit of treatment needed for this Palace man, Mustafa down, for Agbin on. No, he's back to his feet. There will be a Palace free kick in the centre circle. Rovers have shown signs of life since going 3-1 down. Edmondson going through on goal a couple of times. Ball goes over the head of Batty and Kapoor gets onto it. This is a sim similar sort of position from what he scored from as well, the Palace guy. In field towards Wells Morrison, Deveni, Rodney. Palace going from right to left. Rodney again, the defender. Wells Morrison, the change. Palace just making Rovers work. But they're being all forced back. Good work there from Lewis Belt. On halfway. Oh, 
Mills Morrison loses out. Grady Macken working to try and get there. Palace throw. Stop start nature of this. Last few minutes. Probably isn't helping Rovers. Bell gets away down the right side. It's missed there by Jake Grant. Kapora. Infield to Mustafa. Looks to dart beyond Caddick and does really well. The Palace number 10. He then messes up the pass. Batty gets in there. Goes all the way back to Jake Barrett for Rovers to start again. And with the time ticking. It's not quite now or never time for Rovers, but we've got under 20 minutes left and Marsh goes forward and I suppose all the while Rovers will end up taking risks at some point. Palace will hope to pick off Sharon's side. Here's been on, score of that third minute opener. For Palace who score three at the Rovers Academy again for the second successive meeting. I do feel if it gets any more than that for the Eagles, then it'll be too far for Rovers to mount a comeback. Here's Rodney. Seems to be a little bit more advanced these last five minutes or so. Malden. Deveni. Marsh looks as suspiciously offside there but he's broken the offside trap apparently and uh, in the end the pressure from Litherland just put off the Palace number nine there were appeals for offside against the Palace forward he's just stretching stretching himself out there back to his feet but limping a little bit wondering whether that's cramp or a little bit of a knock that might seem Palace ready in another change. It might be for Zach Marsh. Litherland to Caddick. Space for Batty. He goes, waits for it. Now back to Litherland. Gets over halfway. Sends it to Houghton on this near side. Next has done well today. Actually, the Rovers number two. Here's Edmondson flicks it towards Houghton. Dealt with by Jameed. Helped on by Marsh, who again goes to ground easily there under pressure from Reese Doherty. Litherland comes forward, flicked around the corner by Bloxham, who looks to get it back under pressure from Rodney, who deals with it only as far as Lewis Bell on this right hand side. He puts the ball in, flicked on by Stritch. O'Grady Mackin in there lurking. Batty tries to get there before Mustafa. Uh, good spell for Rovers, another throw in. Come in the way of the hosts. Play again from Rovers. Grady Macken thinks that was a foul. Again, nice play from Litherland who just steps in and now drives forward with the ball at his feet. S skips over a couple of challenges and wins Rovers a free kick in a really inviting position. The young defender. Really good positive play from the boyhood Rovers supporter. And hails from Great Harwood. This will be the change for Palace, their second of the game. And it is Marsh, we mentioned, just looked like it picked up a knock in that attack a moment ago. So he's going to be replaced by Jeremiah Amulu. Just under 15 minutes to go. If this goes in, it could be set for a grandstand finish. Zach Stritch, the man, the only man over it. So he will take it. Right-footed Stritch. Up he steps. Long run-up. Sends a low ball in, and Mulden does well, actually, to keep hold of that one. Good purchase on it from Stritch. Bounced just before it. Found the Palace goalkeeper. Came through a couple of bodies as well. Well held by Malden because there was a few blue and white shirts in there ready to snaffle up anything that slipped through, slipped out of the gloves. Good hassling from the Rovers' front line there. Boxen puts Grant under pressure. The Palace right back there. Kapora does well. There's Deveni who's been 
One of their stars today, the Eagles. Nice idea from him to try and find Uma. Houghton wins it, does well. And ball cannons off him. Pierre Palace throw in on this near side. Houghton's done well, but there will be a break in play because Uma is down and that will allow another change to come Rovers' way. Jake Batty, the man sacrificed. Brandon Powell on in his place. Straight swap there at left back. And Batty's had a good game. 77 minutes for him. So that's all Rovers outfielders utilised. Just Adam Khan, Adam Khan, the last man standing on that bench. Strong chance he won't be coming on. Here is one of the Palace changes. I'm just going to come off Edmondson, I think, and go out. In fact, it's Belt. Go out for a throw in. Right where Palace Swamp Rovers. Devaney wants it. Devaney gets it. And come off Caddick's toe as well. Devaney puts it all the way across. It's going to be Kapora. He's already scored, of course. Now it's going to be Mustafa, another one who's already scored. Gets it into the box. He's asked to deliver. He's still got it. He's Uma, who hasn't got on the score sheet. Oh, he's forcing back outside the box, and Agbin on, who has scored, now sends it. I wish he'd done that three minutes in. That one curls comfortably wide of Barrett's left hand post. Right idea, trying to open up his body and send it towards that far corner. But never really troubling Barrett or anyone. On home side on for that matter is Houghton. It's a touch off Agbin on and then Palace have it back to Veni. Mustafa. Pour it to Veni. Wells Morrison. Palace just stroking it around now. They've got the ball. Rovers can't score. And there's Zuma. They're forced back from Houghton who then gives chase. Bloxham going to try and close down Louis Malden. Forced to go long, looking for Kapora. Keeps it in, he's now going to try, try and take on Powell. Instead it's a Omolu, who makes a good run, and that's a good recovery from Reese Doherty. Because it looked like for a moment that Omolu was going to scamper around him on the outside. Good response there from the Rovers centre-back. Will be a Palace corner. And a goal here would really kill off any sort of hopes Rovers have of taking anything from the contest. <laughs> Ten to play. Deveni delivers. Nice ball into a good area. Six yards out and Barrett grabs it the second time of asking. He's not allowed to bowl it out too early. I mean, he's just barged outside of the box and that'll be a book in for Agbin on. Barrett sweeps it out to the substitute Brandon Powell. Runs forward, he's just being dragged back there. That probably will be another book booking. Mustafa booked for the tug back on Brandon Powell. So a couple of bookings in a space of about a minute. For the Eagles, who have the advantage. It's Powell. Good challenge there from Kapora. It's been really impressive for Palace Stanley, right hand side defensively and going forward. Litherland. Barrett goes long. No real time to waste for Rovers. Powell tries to get on the end of it. Kapura's with him. It's going to be a Palace throw in now. Nice 
much better half for Rovers, but I think they are to lose it. Mike Sheeran will look back on that first half performance as being the reason for it. Really weren't at the races. His side. And as it stands, it's going to be a second successive 3 1 defeat in Premier League 2. Let's hope that's not the case. Let's hope there's going to be a goal for the hosts, but not like that because Caddick's pass is cut out as Umet goes forward and Mola beaten to it by Barrett, who nearly is a spectator on the far side. This will be time for another change for Palace and Mustafa's day is done. He's going to be replaced by Ulder Nascimento. He's going to go off at the far side. Yeah, no, we do, but it's so Ash. Ash. Go that side, let Adam come this side. Go see, look, he's blowing the whistle, he's got to go over there. So I'll prove my point. Litherland. That was Reece Doherty. Thump forward, dealt with by Rodney. That one's not going to be kept in there. Oh, idea from Bell to put it on the channel for O'Grady no, Macken to run into. Looks like Edmondson's now playing on the left side. Stretch in the tent, blocks him through the middle still. That alteration certainly pays dividends for Rovers. Blocks are much more effective as a centre forward than he was in the first half as the left winger. Out to take this throw in. Down the line for Bell. He gets it back. Nice ball towards Bloxham. Controls it on his chest, but he's offside. The flag's up. It's a shame because Stritch was nearby, which is what you want. You want your number nine, number ten to be almost next to each other. That link up play. Thump forward from Malden. Stritch rises and comes off the Palace man and goes behind for a throw in. Caddick turns. He'll get through a full 90, which he'll be delighted with because, as we said earlier, his football was hampered last season with a real injury hit campaign for the Rovers midfielder. So. 90 minute the tank for him will be seen as a real positive next game for Rovers in a week's time he will park the venue Manchester United the visitors Friday 30th 7 o'clock kickoff for that one Rovers will be hoping for better fortunes against the Red Devils good, strong, good strength there by Umolo to hold off Doherty Oh, they've got it in the corner, he's surrounded by a couple of blue and white shirts. Houghton has kept it in, it's going to go as far as Wells Morrison who goes backwards. Boxham hunting down Grant. Houghton goes along again. Kapora beaten in the air by Powell but Palace will have the ball. I feel as if the Embers just going out of this match for Rovers with four minutes of the 90 still to be played. So they need a goal and quick, otherwise there'll be no, no points picked up again. Looping pass, looking for Bell, cut out by a Palace man. Nascimento, first touch for him since his Introduction a couple of moments ago. Doherty just has to shield his eyes and gets the head away, but it only goes as far as Deveni on halfway. Now come pour it. Score of that killer third goal. Good time for Palace to find the net as well. Zuma 
The amount of forward players has probably been the quietest out of all of them. All the starters. And they can't keep that one in from Deveni. Shakes his head and grimaces. Caddick down the line. Cut out by a Palace man is Deveni. Right footed now puts it into Agrinon's pass. And he again sends a looping ball into the top corner. And any hopes Rovers have have now been dashed because Agbinon has just almost lobbed Barrett and put it into the top corner. It didn't seem to be a lot of power in it, but he's beaten the Rovers goalkeeper. He couldn't have placed it any better. And Palace have a fourth. With time running out. And that will be that for Rovers. There'll be no return or no comeback from 4-1 down with three to go. 87 minutes played. It's now Rovers under 21's one. Palace under 21's four. And that should be game set and match for the Eagles who kicked off their campaign today after that postponement last week and have made up for that. Will there be a consolation for Rovers? Ads level with Jacko. Up a yard. Central. Jerry Central. Jerry Central. Palace, you're just saying, look, let's see the game out professionally now. Take the 4 1 win and get back down the road. But Powell is looking to change that. Palace are going to come forward again. And Hank been on, obviously, on a hat trick now. Scored with three minutes played and scored with three minutes to go. Is Bell down the line to blocks him. Bell's continued his run, puts it back in there, and he's going to fall to a blue and white shirt. It is eventually Stritch collects back to Caddick, 20 yards from goal. Palace allow him to get to the edge of the box, blocks him. Edmondson was going to try and get it on that favoured left foot. Does just that, blocks him again, really tight and congested in there. Goes for goal, blocks him, and it comes off the post. And Rovers do have one back. Instant response. Blocks a powerful strike. Arrowed into that bottom corner. Really good hit from Bloxham. No chance for Malden, who barely moved as it sailed towards the his right. Clipped the post before finding the back of the net. And now, with 89 minutes on the clock, it's Rovers under 21s too. Palace under 21s four. Fancied there'd be goals in this one. That's been the case again. Manage it, manage it. Palace might not be done here as Kapora comes forward and now it's the substitute. He then finds the back of the back of the net. It's the two substitutes. Palace now regain the advantage. And it was Nascimento's shot. Clipped the post and Umolu, like all good strikers should do, follow it up on the goal line pretty much. And the blink of an eye. 4-1's become 4-2 and now it's 5-2. 90 minutes on the clock and it's now Rovers under 21's 2. Palace under 21's 5. And the scorer, Jeremiah Umolu. And that will be that. There will be five minutes of added time, but it's not going to make a big difference in this game. Palace have the points. Rovers continue to look for their first point of the campaign. It will be two defeats from two. Grant. out, it's Defeni, Umo is screaming for it, instead he's looked over the top of Agbinon who's been sent a little bit wide by Litherland there, it's going to go to Umolu, nice turn from him and then he sends it into the top corner, there are more goals to come, 
And it's Amolu, his second of the game. Twice in three minutes, Palace have struck. And the scoreline looks really emphatic now, doesn't it? Into added time in the 90 minutes. And the scoreline now, and probable result, you'd have to say, is Rovers under 21s too. Crystal Palace under 21s six. Amolu again, striking. Touch was excellent to get it out of his feet. And then he sent it brilliantly towards that top corner. And now him, the substitute and Agbin on. Both on hat-tricks looking to take that match ball home. And they've got a couple of minutes to, to get that. A goal fest in the final three or four minutes here. Netherland, Rovers continue to probe. Blocks him. Nice hold up play. Shakes off to Venny. He's got Houghton on the right side. Houghton is going to get it. Is he going to get there before Uma though? That's the question. The answer is no. It'll be a corner kick though for Rovers. Blocks him to take it. Goes short towards Caddick. Palace have got bodies back and are forced. But they've got the ball back, have they? No, Evanson's going to get that one. But they've got them right in the corner, Palace. will be a second bite of the cherry, another corner on the way. Rovers have to make the most of one of these. In fact, now it's gone for a goal kick. Malden to smash this one clear. Up it goes, Caddick. Bell down the line looking for Edmondson who's going to chase down the Palace map. Malden forced to kick it first time. Back and forth. Bell beaten in the air. Grady's not. Blocks and will give chase. Hooked over the top there by Jameed. Palace come forward again, Umolu, we said he's on that hat-trick. He's going to go on the outside of Litherland. Umolu still, nice turn and twist in the box. He needs three bodies to get back there, Umolu. His game, he's not giving up there. It looks a late challenge, that might have been a bit of a crude one. On Rhys Doherty as he tries to clear it. And Umolu is going to get the book in to go with his brace. Darren Powell will say... Great impact from his substitute. Caddick. And Grady Macken. Blocks him. Does he stay on side? No, he's off. Flags up. Well done, Caden. No real complaints from Tom Bloxham. And Rovers will probably just want this game done and dusted now. Get back in there, debrief. And hope for better in a week's time at Ewood where hopefully there'll be good support there for the home team Mike Sheeran looks to really kick off the season with victory ideally otherwise you don't want to be going weeks into the campaign looking for that first win I get it nice and early hopefully game three will be the one where Rovers get off the mark Umer good leap and winning of the header now he's going to drop to Deveni gets inside the box the Northern Irishman goes for goal and there is another goal Palace do make it a magnificent seven. And Deveni gets the goal that his performance deserves. And that is the last kick of the game. Full time here. Palace with a glut of goals in the final few minutes to earn a big win in East Lancashire. Rovers under 21s two. Crystal Palace under 21s seven. <laughs>